Well, hello. As we get into fall, we start wanting to have people over and gather around good food. And that for me is all about a great fall inspired charcuterie board. Now, technically a charcuterie board in the traditional sense is all meats and cured meats. This is gonna be a charcuterie board as more of a snack plate with delicious components of cheeses, nuts, and beautiful fruits and dried fruits and crackers and all the things. And what the best part is, we're gonna make three distinct components that kind of pull it together, but then use all the other items that are either prepared or bought in like cheeses and things. I'm not gonna have you make your cheese. That'd be a lot of work, I don't make cheese. So to start, we're gonna do a fall inspired, a fall spice nut. I love them. I love a good candy coated kind of sweet spicy nut. So it's gonna be kind of a unique one, that's what I love. To start, we're gonna have, of course, some brown sugar. Now, I always start with brown sugar when I do a nut, usually, because to me, it adds that sugary coating that you kind of crave on a good nut. We're gonna add some maple syrup. The maple syrup adds, one, just a good sweetness, of course, but it something about the coating with it also kind of gives you that great texture that you're looking for. With that, I'm gonna add some water. Now, water seems weird, but what water does is it really kind of helps thin it out and really help it coat the nuts evenly, which is what you're looking for. And so then we're gonna talk about the spices. So we're starting with garam masala. Now, I love garam masala because it has multiple wonderful warming spices in it with coriander and ginger and cinnamon and black pepper and cumin, and it has the cardamom in it, nutmeg, smells amazing like a spice market. So we're gonna add some of that. I think it instantly gives you kind of this unique fall approach. I wanna up the cinnamon that I have going on in it already, but add some more to really kind of bring out that fall kind of spice that we're looking for and some more cardamom. Now cardamom is a strong spice, but I don't think we use it enough. So along with that, we're gonna add some salt. Salt is essential because salt is really what balances everything out. So when you, when you think about it and you get a really great nut somewhere, it's that salty kick that you kind of love sometimes. So we're stirring that together just to make sure it's somewhat evenly combined. As much as we can do. The spices at first will seem hard to incorporate because they're not always water soluble, usually oil, but as we're mixing them, you're getting this amazing hit of this like fall, just like spice that you want. So I'm gonna slowly start pouring it around and then we're gonna get our hands messy because the easiest way to do this, and I'm, as I'm doing it, I wanna make sure I get all those spices. I don't leave that out. We're not going to this work to not have all those flavors we want. So as we're doing this, I want to make sure that we really kind of work it in there and get all of these nuts coated in this mixture. That's why we have that water because it's helped kind of thin it out and you can see as I'm mixing it, it doesn't pool near as much as you think then. And so when we put it in, the water is actually going to evaporate. Once it evaporates, that sugary coating along with those spices is really going to adhere to all these. So I'm going to spread them out. I'm gonna pop these in the oven, clean my hands, and we'll move on to the next component. Best charcuterie board ever. The next component is a really simple marinated olive. So I'm using a mixture of olives I love, Kalamata green jumbo ones without pimentos, and then Castelvetrano, one of my favorites, which are a little bit brighter green. I love the mixture. You can do whatever olive really you like. They're all pitted, I've drained them, but first what we wanna make for them is it's really simple, but a marinade. So it's like ones you would buy, but it's better when you make it because it has more flavor. It can be catered to you. But I think the punch you get from it is so much better. So we're gonna start with olive oil. This is, we get, you need a decent amount of olive oil, so I should take my stopper off here. But we wanna start with a good amount of olive oil in here because really what we're gonna do is add this to the olives and really get them to kind of soak in this beautiful marinade, which is what you're wanting. So to the olives, we're gonna add some garlic because we need that good hit of garlic. Now I grow my own garlic so I get really jumbo cloves usually because every year they get bigger and better. So I just cut off the ends of them, the little root end, and then I just take the back of my hand, the palm, smash it slightly. And when you smash it, one, I like having that smashed clove in there because it adds to me more flavor. I don't really need to chop it. But instead you can just take then that husk off so easily, which I love. We don't need the root in there though. So we're gonna just smash a couple more. So you can see, you can adjust your garlic to whatever size garlic you get. Seriously, these are jumbo, beautiful. I actually might cut that one in half because it's so big. But I want them more to flavor and not have little pieces of garlic everywhere. So we're gonna add that in there. Then we want some aromatics. And it's gonna start with some citrus. So I want both orange and lemon. So we're gonna just sit here and just really get off some nice pieces of citrus. And I'm using a peeler that just makes the strips for you, which, I don't know, for me when you're going to this, 
You could just cut off a big piece and then hand do it, but if I can, I have this peeler and I admit, not that you do it a lot. But whether you use it for garnishes, cocktails, whatever it is, it can be kind of nice because it just breaks them apart for you. So I'm adding in the orange and I want to do the same with some lemon. And so we're going to kind of get what's nice is here, all these components, they just flavor it, but they don't overpower it. I mean, olives have a nice brininess already. They come, you know, usually kind of in a brine and you're going to get that hit of briny olive still, but these aromatics just kind of help elevate it. So along with the citrus, we're going to add some pepper flakes, just some red pepper flakes. I think that little bit of spice, you don't want to make it so hot that it's spicy, but it kind of just wakes everything up. I'm going to add some bay leaves. I go out and just get some fresh ones off my plant, but you can use the ones you buy in the store too. I'm going to add some sprigs of rosemary. I really want that rosemary to give it that great hit of those essential oils, which I love. So we're gonna put that right in there. And then a couple cracks of black pepper. So I'm gonna bring this very low heat over the stove, very low, not wanting to smoke it, not wanting to do anything like that, but just kind of gently warm it to kind of activate the citrus, the clove of garlic, all that, and we'll dump it over the olives. I just pulled out the nuts. I, every five or 10 minutes, I just went in and stirred them. And you can see they want to clump when they start cooling. I'm gonna let them fully cool. Keep stirring them every so often, but look how beautiful they are. They're coated. They have that wonderful garam masala and spices on them. I'm gonna let them cool off. While the oil is still heating, we're gonna talk about a brie. This is the last component. So it's really quick components that we're making. That's the best part. So brie is good on its own. A lot of times we bake brie. We put puff pastry around it. It's heavy, but it's also like, once you dig into it, it kind of looks, with all the puff pastry and stuff, it's not my favorite. So I take a wheel of brie, and I like to just slice off a little bit of that rind. Not that it's not edible, it completely is. But what I want, since I'm not gonna be encasing this in puff pastry, and instead what I'm gonna do is put some, just a couple things on it and bake it. I wanna make sure that it just gets melty. And I love to use a triple cream brie if I can. They're really soft to work with, but they get so beautifully soft and perfect. So I'm just taking off a little bit of that rind. Look at that. You're exposing all the goodness. And I like to put mine in a little ramkin. It fits in to me really perfectly. I put it on here just to put it in the oven. But I'm gonna dust it with just a little bit of chipotle powder. Trust me on this. You get that smoky, little bit of spice deliciousness. We're gonna then drizzle it with some honey. I <laughs> know, this isn't really a recipe. This is why I said you can just do a few components, which is kind of nice. And we're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna let it get melty. We're gonna let it get warm. And we'll put it together with a charcuterie board. So I pulled this off. It was on low heat, that oil but it just wanted to start kind of like cooking and bubbling around the citrus and the rosemary, which I don't want it to cook or sear. I just wanted it to get nice and warm through so you know it was kind of releasing all the oils. And I'm just gonna pour it all over my olives. So you get that beautiful, look at all those aromatics. Look at all that beauty. I just wanna get a spoon and we're gonna just stir it a little bit. And now this could be made over a week ahead, put in an airtight container, store in the fridge, Obviously, the olive oil would kind of congeal, you know, or solidify, but I'm just gonna let it sit at room temperature for a while. Just kind of marinade. Look at, I mean, if this isn't festive and beautiful, think of the holidays coming up. We're gonna let it sit. We're gonna start assembling charcuterie board. You're happy, I'm happy. So I'm putting some different cheeses around. Now, what you can see I'm doing is taking some pieces of, I had cleaned, a large head of purple cabbage. And I take the rib out of the stem on the outer leaves that I don't use because they're too tough. I just think it's nice to have a base for some of your cheese. It gives texture, it gives color. You can use any type of leaf or green you want. What I like is this is technically edible, it's not weird. So I think it's nice to use. But I do love to have a lot of different cheeses. So I'm doing a Parmigiano Reggiano, just a good authentic one because I think, I don't know, I love that hit of briny, you know how I just love things that have like good flavor, good salt to them. And that's what this is. And I always want to get it started for people because what are people going to do? They're going to come over and see maybe none of it taken and be like, oh, I don't want to start the cheese. It was a Midwest thing. It was like, no, eat what's out. That's the point. So I'm going to place around kind of my other cheeses using some of these leaves. 
We're in Iowa, so I am gonna do some Maytag blue cheese. It's made in Iowa and I love that. And it's a good blue cheese. It's nice and soft. So that's what's kind of nice about the cabbage leaves too is they'll hold it up. And you can use obviously whatever cheeses you want. I mean, this is your charcuterie board, you know, your snack plate, use what works for you. I like a hard manchego. I think that's just like a nice one. So I like to do different types and different pieces. So the rest of it is really embellishing with all of our components. So obviously we need to make some bowls of the olives. I do like to have some of the things in it that it, they're marinating in. So even if there's like some pieces of that rosemary or the wonderful like bay leaves, I will put that with it so you can kind of see and get the flavors. Cause you know what we do, we taste with our eyes first. We see what it was. We see the beauty of it. And that to me is important. So I'll be placing these around along with some of my home canned items. So this is why I love to can pickled items. So like all the little peppers, my mom and I stuff, my grandma used to do it um, with cabbage and then we pickle, those will be on here. They're usually one of the first things to go. And then the pickles, like you could do bread and butter picker, pickles, a dill pickle. So I'll be scattering all these things in different places. We'll put the brie on here, we'll put nuts and then dried fruits. So I like a conglomeration as you can see and I like options. So we're getting into fall, so I love good craisins and I get apple juice sweetened craisins just because I like them slightly better without like the extra, extra refined sugar. So I might keep those in the container, but then I'll pull in some dried figs, some dried Turkish apricots, and then some good seedy crackers. I like the ones that have a lot going on to hold up to some of these strong cheeses and the brie that can be spread on them. So I'm gonna start just placing, putting things on, and it'll all come together. Are you guys ready to eat? Cause I hope you're all coming over. It's a big board. That's what's fun about this. You can cater obviously the size to however many people you're having. Can you imagine this at holiday parties, fall gatherings, whatever you're doing? It has all the different components. You can kind of keep things beside you like your canned items or your bought and pickled items as you might need to fill them. But what we have here is beauty one, but we have the three big components that we put together. So marinated olives, which honestly, let's be honest, they're pretty easy. and. I'll sample one. Oh my, you're good. Okay, what's amazing is they only marinated probably for an hour as I was doing this video. Usually I would do it, you know, the morning of for an evening party. You're getting the rosemary right away and that citrus and I love that. Along with, look at the ribbon right down the center of those spiced nuts. I go for the pecans right away because all those ridges have extra like sugary spicy coating. Just like a corner piece of cake, go for the big one. Mm. Those I have nothing bad to say about. You get all those like interesting warming spices. You get the cardamom, the cinnamon, but then you also get, you don't get cumin that's in the garam masala, but you get this hit of like awesome spices that, so good. And of course then look at our melty brie. And so I have the good heavy crackers right beside it that can hold it. Cause you know, you want people to be able to grab something right away and be like, oh, how's that gonna taste? And take a little hit. There nothing wrong with that. That's good. You get that like sweet spice smoky, so good. And then you have all the different cheeses and some meats and all the dried fruits. I did dried mulberries even cause well, personally I just love them. But dried figs, the cranberries for that sweet tart, even some fresh grapes. And I of course did multiple cheeses along with the blue cheese and the Parmesan, the Manchego. I did a soft cheddar that has some herbs in it. So just some different interesting ones. So we have like five cheeses, the nuts, we have some meat, which is just kind of whatever you're gonna want for a cured meat. But guys, look at this. I actually often go for the pickled items too, but there it is in all of its glory. A fall inspired charcuterie board with a wink snack plate, but it's one of my favorite things and it's how I love to gather people around and enjoy people. So this one is for me and you guys to enjoy together. I'll just have to eat it all. What do I hope you do with this? I hope you share this video around. I hope you're inspired and excited. Share the video because yes, that helps me so much, but it helps so many other people to see these things are doable. You can break these things down into smaller components or go all the way, whatever works for you. Check my website, wiseguide.com for all these different recipes and how it goes together. That's where all my recipes are. And until next time, have some people gather around, graze and enjoy. That's what it's all about. Now we need a drink. <laughs>